name is Thomas Dawson. I work in skin and hair care. I work in Singapore at the Skin Research Institute of Singapore. I've been working on hair and skin for about 20 years. And you asked a specific question about hair care products and hair loss. So I primarily work in consumer hair care. So not drugs, not pharmaceuticals, but in the hair care products that anyone can buy from a salon or from a store or over the counter. And we link those to hair loss primarily because at a meeting like the ISHRS, we're trying to uh, maximize the amount of hair that people have. As a biologist, hair loss and hair fall are very difficult. There's not much known about it. And one of the reasons the ISHRS exists is because hair transplantation surgeries is one of the only ways to really be able to treat significant hair loss. But in the consumer hair care industry, what we try to do is maximize hair health. So I have a unique position. Having worked mostly in consumer care, I work on healthy people, not on people that have a specific disease. It's kind of rare. The lecture I'm gonna to give tomorrow is even to define what healthy actually is with something more than absence of disease. So working on healthy people makes you look at things in a completely different way. What I've been talking about this, these few days at this meeting is about how consumer hair care products can benefit hair health. And what we really learn is that hair is good. When hair is born and it comes out of your scalp and out of the hair follicle, it's about as good as it's ever gonna get. And mostly what we do after that is damage hair in ways that then we have to again try to fix. A lot of the hair care industry exists because people want what they don't have. People that have straight hair want curly hair. People that have curly hair want straight hair. People that have light hair want dark hair. People with black hair want red hair. And you can do that. And consumer hair care products can do that. But there's a cost. And hair is a very complicated structure and a lot of those treatments damage the hair in ways that then promote breakage or change the hair structure and make it not what we want to be. So really hair care products in a lot of ways are designed to be able to repair or minimize that damage, which is the stuff that's done by other hair care regimens. So there's really three kinds of hair care products shampoos, rinse off conditioners, and leave in treatments. Uh, shampoos and rinse off conditioners are designed to be used with water to rinse them off. And the biggest problem that you have from being able to try to do stuff to hair is that then you're gonna rinse it off. So leaving things behind doesn't work well. Shampoos especially are specifically designed to clean. So it's really difficult for a shampoo to leave behind a benefit agent, whatever it is, whether it's to benefit scalp biology or hair chemistry, shampoos primarily are gonna clean hair. So as consumers look for great hair care products and things that they need, I usually recommend shampoos to clean. Don't look to shampoos to condition, don't look to shampoos to leave behind colorants, don't look to shampoos to repair. Look to shampoos to set your hair up so that it's clean and ready to receive a benefit agent from another product. That today, primarily in the West, especially, will be from a rinse off conditioner. So rinse off conditioners are very much more similar to shampoos than most people think. They just have less surfactant and more benefit agent. So conditioners are gonna be designed to repair damage that's done to hair by weathering, by UV from sunshine, or by those chemical treatments and thermal treatments that most people do. And what they do is they leave behind specific materials to fix specific problems. Hair is supposed to be shiny, and what shiny means is uh, oily, hydrophobic. Um, as a chemist, we call shininess hydrophobic because that's how light reflects off surfaces. So conditioners are designed to leave behind materials that are make hair look shiny. 
Also, conditioners are designed to leave materials behind that'll make you be able to comb it. So if you've had hair like mine, you'll know that even just getting a brush through wet hair can be really difficult. So conditioners will minimize damage to hair by leaving behind slippery materials, usually silicones, but also can be oils of many types that'll allow you to be able to brush your hair without damaging it and breaking it. And so the next level are leave-in treatments. And leave-in treatments have the ability to be able to leave behind cool benefit agents that rinse off like shampoos and conditioners can. So I encourage people in the West to do more with leave-in treatments because they're more likely to be able to get benefits that they really like. Uh, whether it's shine, whether it's smoothness, whether it's uh, detangling, uh, leave-in treatments as a general rule are going to be able to deliver uh, uh, a lot more benefit agent at a lot more cost-effective price. We just had a big session where we talked a lot about sulfites and sulfates and shampoos. And there is a trend today in removing sulfates from shampoos. I think the real issue there is that some people are really sensitive to sulfites when they eat them. Right? And, and people are allergic to sulfites. And that's where this desire for sulfate, sulfite-free comes from. But topically, sulfites and sulfates really don't seem to have much toxicity in humans. Uh, and we had a great discussion um, over this very topic. And it seems like today it's all about trade-offs. What people are looking for when there is when they, they go with sulfate, sulfite free is mildness. At least that's what we see most commonly in sort of claims and in the literature and in what we see about sulfate and sulfite free shampoos. But the reality of the situation is, is that surfactants are designed to clean. And what they're supposed to do is remove things from hair. And so if you use a sulfite or a sulfite free surfactant matrix in a shampoo or a conditioner, what you're doing is having a more mild, less cleansing shampoo. And so you have to add more. So you get this balance. You've used a milder surfactant and a milder cleanser, but you have to use more of it in order to get adequate lather and adequate cleansing and adequate cleaning. So it's just not clear today what the benefit is. I certainly, and the people that I have spoken to here certainly agree that it doesn't seem like there's a specific reason not to use sulfite or sulfate free shampoo. So I also don't think there's a specific reason to specifically use or specifically pay more for a sulfite free or a sulfate free shampoo. Realistically, the benefit that you get is gonna be based on the specific formulation that you're using and everybody's hair and hair type is different. And so getting the right shampoo and the right conditioner for you is probably much more important than whether it's sulfate free or not.